Well, just because Carol's with her nice friends in white doesn't mean I've run out of stories for you. Today's tale comes from my mother, who hated Carol possibly more than anyone in the family. See, Carol had already sucked all the air out of the house by the time my mom was born. I think it was a combination of Grandpa's old school leanings and the fact that there was no other female in the family until my mom was born. From what I hear, Grandma just kind of stewed in depression most of their lives. Carol was given free run of the house, which probably set the precedent early on. After Grandma died, Carol would forcibly try to mother her family. And by family, I mean my mom. Carol not having a maternal bone in her body meant that it was mostly just controlling behavior, holding her to some bizarre standard of what a lady did. A standard that did not apply to Carol, mind you. All of this culminated in the event that led to my mother moving out before she'd even finished high school. Grandpa never stopped her, and gave her some money because he felt guilty about not being there for her more. Money that Carol immediately called and tried to get it back. High school prom. My mom had a dress that looked like an organzic wedding cake. Her hair was crimped. Her eyeshadow was powder blue. She was ready. Except. Except she needed an escort. An escort like she was a debutante going to a royal ball. And who to escort her? Why, her older sister, of course. My mom is a fighter. She fought. I mean, she physically fought. Uncle Bob is the only reason Carol has two eyes left in her head. My mom was going for broke. Finally, he was able to talk her down from her blind rage by begging her to do this for Dad. Mom finally relented that Carol could come, but she would have none of the privileges she'd been demanding. No veto power over her dates. No helping Mom with her hair. No coming into the prom itself. Not that that stopped Carol from trying to interfere. She took a bunch of jabs at my mom's dates. The guy had terrible hair. He was a nerd. His family was poor. He wasn't good enough for mom. Yada, yada. Well, not to get too corny, but that nerd is my father. So my mom won on that count. Well, no one was having something Carol couldn't have, so... She needed a date, too. Said date was a complete mystery until the night of the prom, so Mom just figured she had made someone up out of jealousy and was planning to throw a fit when he didn't show. Oh, how wrong she was. My nerd father showed up in his dad's ill-fitting tux with the corsage he made out of origami. Supposedly, having a date didn't stop Aunt Carol from hitting on him. My dad gets the cold horrors to this day when reminded about it. Carol was bizarrely inappropriate, accidentally brushing against his naughty bits and making comments about preferring mature women. You'd think my mom would be furious, but actually she was fighting really hard to hold in her laughter. She wasn't laughing when Carol's date showed up. To get you ready for this hunk of manhood, I'll inform you that he introduced himself as Slim. We have no idea where Carol found this guy. Carol was like a dousing rod for the bazaar, as you've seen. He was clearly in his forties, leather fringe vest, Hulk Hogan mustache, cheap tats, and one white milky eye. I wouldn't have believed my mom about this walking, talking stereotype, but she showed me the picture Uncle Tim snapped at Carol's insistence. My dad has a deer in the headlights look. My mom looks both distressed and angry, and Slim towers over Carol, who is doing this faux demure smile. Carol has some really old fashioned ideas of men and women, like medieval old. It was best when the man was older than the woman and ordered her around. Men should pay for everything, yet Slim kept bumping money off of her and my mom. Wrap your head around that one. 
Women couldn't so much as burp without apologizing a million times, but men could be as raunchy as they wanted because that's just how it is. Men could never control their urges, so being alone with a man was an open invitation. And of course, her all-important etiquette against being rude. Mom couldn't refuse to let a 40-something stranger on her prom date. It would be rude. She couldn't turn down his chivalrous offer to sit in the back seat with him. Dad fell on that grenade and said he got car sick riding shotgun, so Mom got to ride up front. No asking Slim about his eye, his employment status, or who the hell he was. Personal questions were the rudest of all, don't you know? So my mom had two choices. One was to stay at home, miss prom, and probably still have to deal with Slim. The other was to brave the car ride, go to prom, and possibly ditch Carol. She went with door number two. Slim spent the whole ride making gross jokes about high school girls. Carol spent it drilling my dad for info. I think she still had her heart on stealing my dad from her sister, and dad was not used to her brand of crazy, so he was differentially polite. My mom was heartbroken by the time they actually got into the school. She thought dad had been put off by her crazy family. She said when they got their tickets, they had a moment where they each looked at each other and just laughed. Then they went to drink punch and dance. I'm happy to say that portion of the night went well for them. They had a real connection. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here, would I? And enjoyed bonding over how crazy Carol was. Sadly, that good portion ended when my mom couldn't find her bladder anymore and went to the ladies' room. Carol came in, blatantly breaking rule number three calling mom's name. My mom contemplated just not answering her for a minute before responding. Carol said her little prom date was waiting for her by the rear entrance. She shouldn't be rude and keep him waiting. Mom thought it was weird my dad would be out there, which is where people ducked out to smoke, but okay. He probably wanted to ditch the prom and Carol. There are no lights back there. So my mom was waiting for her eyes to adjust as the one-way door closed behind her. When her night vision kicked in, she saw not the dorky silhouette of my father, but the glow of a cigarette reflected in one milky eye. Around this time, Carol approached my dad, who was waiting with two slices of cake like the gentleman he was. After some nauseating flirtation, Carol said that my mom had ditched him for some other guy. She was so, so sorry, and would he like to dance? My dad knew exactly two things in that moment. One was that he didn't and would never trust Carol. The other was that wherever my mom was, she was probably in peril. So that nerd turned his back on Carol and summoned his nerd pack to spread out and search for her. My mom, meantime, was waffling between fight and flight. Slim stood in the middle of her escape route and she was in heels for the first time in her life. Slim killed a cigarette. Your sister wants to go now. That's not what she told me. She said my date was looking for me. Slim laughed. We ought to go anyway. Getting close to your bedtime, little girl. Slim picked up a cup he'd had sitting on the ground next to him. Here, finish your punch, and we'll go. My grandpa, being old-fashioned, had not educated my mother in the finer points of date rape. My mother smelled the punch for liquor and found none, so she took a drink. She hoped it would put Slim off his guard. Maybe she could charge past him for freedom. Screaming for help never occurred to her because good old grandpa had ingrained in her the need to never make a fuss about anything. Mom said when her legs started to go, that was the scariest moment of her life. Slim had watched her drink. Now he held his arms out like he was going to catch her. One of Dad's friends, acting on a whim, pushed open the back door. Mom flopped over to him, fighting her suddenly clumsy tongue to beg him to bring her inside. Dad said his friend took one look at Slim and knew the score. Hold on now, I'm her uncle. Slim was walking to them 
with his hand out. It's all right. Dad's friend grabbed my mom under the armpits and yanked her back inside. Well, in my mom's impaired state, she realized she had been poisoned, and the best way to get it out would be to vomit. So she had him drag her into the bathroom where she was in good hurling company. My dad, having heard through the grapevine what was going on, went into the bathroom and held mom's hair while she tossed it. That's when she knew he was a keeper. Dad and his friends took charge of my mom that night, whisking her away to an all-night diner and giving her lots of coffee until she could talk without slurring. Then she slept on the floor of his den in the middle of a protective nerd field. Never felt so loved, she said. In the morning, Dad's mom made her eggs and waffles and gave her a nice hug. All the good feelings of that morning promptly dissipated when she arrived home and saw Carol waiting at the front door with her arms crossed, radiating disapproval. How dare she ditch her chaperone? How dare she be so rude to Slim, who disappeared, probably due to her rudeness? How dare she spend the night at a boy's like a common slut? Mom stepped out of her heels, walked up to the porch, and calmly punched Carol right the fuck out. Then she turned around, got back in the car, and went to live with my father's family. Uncle Bob was responsible for getting my mom's stuff to her. Even so, quite a few of her clothes disappeared before they could be accounted for, along with some of her jewelry and the pillow Grandma had sewn for her. Mom ate the loss, because it was a small price to pay for her freedom. My dad's family were lovely people who helped them out a lot, and so my mother had a non dysfunctional family to model after when I came along. And Slim? Why, he was the best man at their wedding. I kid, I kid. He kept showing up to the school and then the waitress job my mom got. So my dad's dad threatened him with the cops if he didn't cut the shit. He would still pop up from time to time, shooting her a wink with that milky eye from across the grocery store or on the street. Every time she was tempted to forgive Carol, Mom said, that guy would remind her why she shouldn't. <laughs>